hello guys welcome back welcome back to my channel thank you very much for supporting me on this journey remember to like share comment and subscribe to my channel let me know what other videos you want me to create for you and i'll be happy to do so so today's video guys this was requested by some students in my cxc live stream they asked to do a video on vectors but before we get into vectors guys, we need to understand that there are two physical quantities one is scalar and one is vector here I have some notes for you. So scalar quantities are quantities that has magnitude but no direction. For example, mass, temperature, volume, and time. So basically a size or number is attached to these but they do not have a direction. So vectors, on the other hand, are quantities that have both magnitude and direction. So I think about velocity, we think about speed and direction, acceleration. We think about the fastest velocity, um, how fast velocity is changed. And you know, force given in newtons. All right, so let's get right into vectors. So vectors can be represented using capital letters or common letters. If you have uh, capital letters, you'll see the arrow above it or if it's a common letter you will see it in either um bold italic or bold with a little bar below it and some persons i've seen have the bar above it okay so these represent vector and the capital letter the arrow above it okay guys so remember vector has magnitude and direction so when you see the other vector like a b that's the vector a b so the starting point is the first letter you're seeing and that's a the end point or the terminal point would be b okay and so a to b would be this line segment but on this line segment it has a particular size or magnitude and the direction is going upwards okay so we can either say um a b which is going upwards are the vector b a now the di the magnitude will be the same but your direction will be changing and later you'll know about um inverse or negative the negation of vectors where you change the direction hence the magnitude is affected so the vector guys is basically a shift in the horizontal and a rise in the y so the vector a b here we know we go A on an x-word movement. In this case, we are going to the right. So the arrow is going this direction as you can see right here. And you don't turn back, guys. You continue on the same path. So A, and you then go uprise to B. The, x, the horizontal movement here represents X. The vertical movement represents Y. And understanding this, guys, you will realize that a, B is X, Y, given in, given in column form, okay? So some persons call this column form or vector form. It doesn't matter. It means the same thing. So X comes first, then Y, okay? So let's continue. So we have something that's called equal vectors, and these vectors has the same magnitude and direction, Okay? And for equal vectors, guys, we have different ways of writing equal vectors. You know, they can, they may not be beside each other. So, for example, I should draw the vector um, x, y, and this vector, let me call it 2, 3. I could draw another vector up here, call it vector a, b, and it is also 2, 3. Okay, so arrow, also two, three. So they not may not be beside each other, but once the x balls and y balls are the same, they are considered to be equal vectors. Having equal vectors, guys, we have also we also have inverse vectors, and these vectors have the same magnitude but opposite direction. So earlier I spoke to you about the vector. A B. I'm gonna bring up the paper. The vector A B going this direct um this direction. 
So if I said B, A, so let's say A, B was 1, 2. That doesn't look feasible. Let me use 3, 4. So A, B is 3, 4. All right? So if A, B is 3, 4 going this direction, if I wanted to identify B, A, I will be going in the opposite direction. Hence, these X and Y values will become negative. Okay? So if A, B, as you see, is 3, 4, if I wanted to go B, A, it will be negative 3, negative 4. So once you're changing your direction, your magnitude is also affected where you make them negative. All right. So having that, having said that, A, B is 3, 2, but X, Y will be a negative 3, negative 2. Or B, A would be negative 3, negative 2. All right, guys. And so that's how the inverse of vector comes about. So we know vectors, guys, can be added or subtracted. We also have something called scalar vectors. I am going to add something here to give an idea. So let's say the vector, come on, let us know. A is equal to 1, 3. So if I ask you to evaluate 2A, you will be evaluating this vector. And the scalar factor you're going to be using is 2. So you're using 2 to multiply by the vector you're given. This 2 goes for the numerator. Mine is the numerator. This 2 goes for the x value and the y value. So 2a will be 2, 6. All right. So 2, 1, 2, 2, 3, 6. So that's 2, 6. And you know that these numbers, we can say that they are parallel all right to each other as one can be found on the other so if you should draw the, the vector for um one three like one you go up three and the two six beside each other you can see that one three can be found in two six as the scalar factor here is two so it's so one three is two times all of that so let's continue position vectors this is a vector where it starts from the origin and if you consider your cartesian plane guys i didn't label this properly so that should be y and that should be x and the point p x y okay the position vector here would be o p as you see i indicated right here so that's o p and you know as before we have the x movement and the y movement so we go start from the origin we go on a horizontal shift. So let's say OP, let's say P was the point three, five. From the origin, we'll go one, two, three. Then from this point three, we go upwards five. So three, five. And again, that's how it's represented in column vector or column matrix form. So note any point, any point X, Y can be represented as a position vector or a, col a position or a column vector. So if you're given the point Q and that point is 1, 2, you can write Q as a position vector by saying O, Q, by identifying that O is the origin, okay? So every point comes from the origin. So O, Q will be this point and you can, as a column vector, it will be 1, 2, Put the vector sign above it. And so that's the point, guys, for OQ. Okay? Let's get on to the next section. So these aspects you see me explaining, guys, are very important in understanding how to identify the triangular law and the parallelogram law. So you have to understand these first before you can move on to the others. Okay? Even to multiply vectors as well or to add them. So the magnitude of a vector, guys. This is denoted by uh, the absolute sign. As you can see, the two lines you see here represents the absolute sign. Okay, guys? And the absolute sign tells the length of the vector. So the vector in the absolute sign tells basically the length. And so if you should consider drawing the vector OP, let me put OP right here, OP, X, Y, we know it's going to be in, vector, in, in column vector form, it is x, y. 
but the, to ca calculate this magnitude guys is gonna be x square plus y square this is basically constructing a triangle below the vector being observed and using Pythagoras theorem to find the magnitude here which is also the hypotenuse of the triangle all right and so to find the magnitude of any vector it's gonna be x square plus y square under the square root so the square root of x square plus y square all right guys and uh, that's it for the magnitude so given the point p 6, 3, we're asked to determine the magnitude of OP. So we know the first point is X, the second um, value is Y. And so the magnitude of any vector is the square root of X square plus Y square. And X is 6, so it is 6 square plus 3 squared. 6 square is 36 plus 9, that will give you 45. And so the root of 45 will be the magnitude of this vector or the length of OP. Okay. And you, you can always construct this if you want to by joining your Cartesian. And then define your point 3 and your point 6. Locate that as P. And this is not drawn to scale, guys. So please don't crucify me in the comment section. So that's OP, and so this will be the root of 45. If you want, you can simplify it. But for now, I'm going to leave it at that. Okay, guys, so the next point is asking us to express the point P as a position vector. Remember, the position vector is telling that it starts from the origin. So P was given as 6, 3 as a position vector. This will be OP, all right? And in column form, 6, 3. Why did I write 3, 6 up here, guys? I don't even know. Let me do over that part. I don't know why I write 6, 3 there. Like it's in my mind. That's 3, 6. So 0. Let's say 6 is here. And 3 is here. So 6, 3 is right here. And that will be your point P. And that will be the root of 45. Okay, guys, and that's the basic introduction for Vector. In the next video, please stay tuned. I'm going to be coming with the triangular law and the parallelogram law, also resultant vector and unit vector. So stay tuned, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Tell me what you think about this video, guys, if it was useful or not. Or what you think I could have done better or differently. I like to get recommendations as that's how we learn. Okay guys, see you on the next one.